Uh, hey, let's, man, let's keep this thing moving along, man. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Um, something else that I found interesting that Montez said in this John interview. Simmons. I forgot about the yeah, John Simmons, too. Jesus Christ. That's still over a decade ago, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's still over yeah, not, a not decade good. ago. I agree. Um, um, no, but uh, uh, something else that I thought that, that Keenan Allen, or um, Keenan Allen, I got Keenan Allen on the brain, that um, Montez, Montez Sweat. Sweat brought up in the Chris Long interview that I thought was very interesting and that I, I think that maybe a lot of Bears fans have overlooked at this point because we've been kind of resigned to our fate. But that Bears versus Packers mental hurdle, is that something that we need to see the Bears overcome? Not just for our own sanity, right? I think as Bears fans, we're ready to hurt people when we don't see the Chicago Bears beat the Green Bay Packers. We tr- It's like, okay, we could have lost all these games, but y'all lost to them. Y'all could have lost these two games, but y'all picked those two to win. But has it become a mental hurdle? for the Bears? Is it something that is literally holding the team back from achieving more? And the reason I say that is when you look at the time when we end up going to the Super Bowl, right? That Mm -hmm. season before, right before that, you end up beating Green Bay or you end up going to Green Bay. You should have beat Green Bay. Don't end up coming away with the win in that. And then you start off the next year by dominating Brett Favre. All of a sudden, it's like this belief is there. Boom, we know what kind of team we are. Here we go. We're down the road. All of a sudden, not to say beating the Packers put them in the Super Bowl, but it's almost like there was a mental hurdle that was jumped that if we can beat them, we can beat everybody. And it's so interesting because sometimes teams just have your number. Sometimes teams just, you look at them and you go, you should be able to beat them. You match up well against them. Everything's lined up for you and you find a way to lose that game. Is the mental hurdle of beating the Green Bay Packers holding the Chicago Bears back from possibly becoming the team that most people hope that they can be? Um, I think I think now, especially especially with this year, um, it, it, it could be. I mean, if you if you think about it, look, I mean, every everybody uh in the NFC North, I mean, that, that's that's pretty much the team that you're chasing, right? I mean, they're they're the youngest. They're what the youngest team in the league. Uh, I mean, still, uh, Jordan Love is on an uprise. I mean, they, they by all accounts have a so I'm a, good defense. Good, good defense. Good they couldn't defense. figure out how to make good, the defense good, work. Good but pieces, they got good, good players over yeah, there. Yeah, they got they got they got good pieces on defense. They got they got great players on defense. But it's it's always like they they know how to go out and and make the plays like it, it's it's almost to a point where i mean e- even when he said like yeah um i i think chris long brought up yeah so what's the goal like yeah everybody's trying to win the super bowl we're trying to win the division like i'm and then mine says like yo i'm not trying to lose to the package i'm tired of hearing you say it yeah and like, you could say you could say it until you're blue in the face i i just think it's definitely gonna be a mental hurdle but i feel like if they come out and that first game that they play against them and do that with the with the season that we expect the Packers to have after what they just came off of, I think that'll be the mental jump that they're looking for. Be, because I, it, that that's the team that they have to pass if they if they even want to win the division. So and I think that that's the interesting part of all of this, right? It's not that here's the thing. If you want to win a division and you lose twice to the Packers, mathematically, you can win a division. Yeah. You can still go four and two in a division. You shouldn't. It, it's it's not that it shouldn't be that big of a hurdle, but it, it's it's almost as if it's something that literally holds the Bears down. Right? And so, for me, I can see the logic of okay, you lost to the Packers, but you can go out there and beat everybody else. You The the Vikings are a very beatable team. You have, you seem like you have the Lions number. You were dominating them for 
uh, seven and a half, seven and three quarters, basically, of eight quarters of football last season. And you yeah. found a way to lose one of those games in that seven and in, in that three and three quarters game, right? But it's almost like when this team talks about the Packers, and I think this is the part that irritates me the most, and like the video if you agree, is that we see the words of the players sometimes say what we they want, what we want to hear. My thing is, is the fact that you're not mentally getting up for the action something that is holding you back? Because I'll tell you this, and I think this is why it actually is a hurdle to beat the Packers. Watch those, rewatch those Packers games last year. I've watched each one of them at least four times. It sucks. But rewatch those Packers games from last year. And you tell me which team took that as the Green Bay versus Chicago Bears rivalry. You tell me which team put in the extra work during the week. You tell me which team cared about the Chicago Bears or the Green Bay Packers coming out victorious. You tell me which team studied twice as hard. You tell me which team, because it's not the team that's down in the, in the series. It's not the team that's been getting their butts kicked since Aaron Rodgers came into the league. It's not that team. And I think that is where, to me, the mental hurdle comes in. It's the, you've got a team that's willing to out-prepare you, and they're up so far, you can't even call it a rivalry anymore. They're up so much in the in the uh, uh, um, Bears versus Packers standings over the last 20 years that you can't even call it a rivalry anymore. And you're the team that's down. That, yeah. to me, is the part that is the mental hurdle, that is the mental exercise, that is what the Chicago Bears need to overcome. Because if you've got teams right now, and I think this starts with flus. I think that, I, I, listen, oh, I absolutely. love the I love the beard. I love everything that Flus has going on coming into this season. His wife told him, get fresh. This man said, I bet. Let me go in there. I'm going to get the number two on this mug. Flip the hair. We coming out different this year. He basically just need a sword to be pulled out his back. And this man going, this is Sparta. I'm here for all of it. But for the love of God, stop saying we're preparing like this is another game. This is not another game. And your team goes out there and plays like this is another game. And the team that you are supposed to beat doesn't. And that goes back to the thought process that I had on Flus for a good chunk of last year where he just wants to be good enough. He doesn't want to be great. I want to do enough to beat you. I don't want to kill you. Bearded Flus, I need stabbing that sword in and twisting the handle. Oh yeah, you you can't you yeah you can't be out here fresh and then not 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 follow up with the dub. I mean, no, nah, I mean I, you're you're absolutely right about that. And and the crazy part again, um, you you know just just going back to everybody everybody getting you know in, introduced, um, well well not not introduced. They 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 basically you know asked about you know what they were looking for in the coaching staff and everything like that. What it what it Kevin Warren, I'm going back to what Kevin Warren said. Basically, yo, tired of being patient. I'm impatient. He he want he wanted to see something now. That at, at some point that got to trickle down to the coach. Like the 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 wild the wild part is this: the fact that you coming in talking like this is just another game. Your top priority is not okay. Not only are we win, not only should we be winning the division, but we need we need to beat the Packers. You know what? It is 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 wild to me, like and, and it's and it's just like you were saying, right? Like they're the ones that are over preparing. They're, those are the guys that are studying. Those are the guys that's, hey, we gonna come early. We we gonna stay late. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is texting Jordan Love on the side, talking about some, hey, way to keep, keep it going, up. like bro, and <laughs> like. You 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 can tell like they're mentally preparing for this even even after Aaron Rodgers left. Yeah. Even, even after Aaron Rodgers left, like they 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 know the assignment and and the fact that you don't and you keep saying, oh yeah, oh yeah, we gonna do this, bro. That that just make me think of somebody that like you in school, you finna get ready to fight, you up here telling your friends, 
oh yeah, oh yeah, three o'clock, I'm finna go, three o'clock, I'm finna go. He go outside, you turn around and he's, oh, I'm not prepared for this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I needed y'all here just in case I needed help in the fight. <laughs> like, you nah, know what I mean? it, it's it's whack. Like, they, they gotta get it together because if you're gonna achieve your goals, that's the team that you gotta leapfrog to get to where you wanna go. I, I think that's the thing too, right? When you when you sit there and you're talking about overcoming, when you're talking about finally slaying the beast, I don't think the beast is Aaron Rodgers. I and and for years I think we thought it was right. The beast is Aaron Rodgers. I think the beast at this point is the mental hurdle that the Bears have placed on themselves. And I think Baki said it best. Baki was talking about uh, uh, Lovey's three goals every year uh, as the Bears head coach was double digit wins, winning the division, and beating Green Bay. I want y'all to go back and listen to Lovey Smith press conferences. They sound like flus. They really do. He said nothing. He literally gave you nothing in every single press conference. He would sit there and just be, you know, I'm just, hey, it, you know, feels good. Hope to see it. We're going to go out here. Rex Grossman's our quarterback. Hey, told you nothing until Packer week. Lovey, what are your thoughts on uh, the preparation that you need to see from your team this week? Everybody out there knows what week this is. Everybody out there knows what they're doing over there. We know what we're doing over here, and we're going to ramp it all up. And Jason talked about that today on the, on the or, uh, tomorrow on the Bears podcast. Tune in with tomorrow's episode. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's different when your leader sets the tone. When your leader sets the tone of let's do enough to get the job done, you do enough to get the job done. When your leader sets the tone of, no, it's a priority that we slay this beast. It's a priority that we find a way to come away with a win in this game. It's a priority that we figure out how to finally overcome what they're doing over there. And we're going to work twice as hard because we know they're going to work twice as hard. In fact, we're going to work three times as hard because we know they're going to work twice as hard. Then it sets the standard for your team moving forward. And last year was more important more than anything because you came out just looking completely unprepared. Yeah. Samurai J, what's good, baby? Over to my like to subscribe to the page. We not over two hundred on the YouTube side. We got the Twitter in this mug. We got a bunch of mugs in there. We got we got uh, Twitch in this mug. We we over two hundred in totality, totality, but we not over two hundred on the YouTube side. Totality, yet, so, uh, totality. Yeah, nah. I'm yeah. When I look at it, and, and then it's like too. I mean, just just go across the league. Just go across the league and look at the other rivalries. Like look, look at Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Like you you trying to you trying to tell me both teams didn't get up for those games. I mean, yeah. I mean, even even now, just look at it. Like, the Bengals could lose every game. Oh, Patrick Mahomes coming to town. Oh, we we know what time that is. Yeah, we know what time that is. Cause, cause I, I already know. Cause I, I, I think they, they said it a couple years back. I don't got to worry about nine. I don't got to worry about Joe Burrow. I don't got to worry about Joe Burrow. Cause I, I already know Joe Burrow's gonna bring his best game. Yeah, like. All, all of these teams are prepared. How come you're not? How how come you're not? And yeah, even then, even if you want to take it back just as recently, the Bills, whole lot of rah rah, whole week. Oh man, Patrick Mahomes ain't ain't, ain't never had an away playoff game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring 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 him to the Bill Stadium. Oh, they are working twice as hard. We working we working four times as hard. Yeah, they said what? Watch this. Yeah, and what happened? And you, I think you that's got, what, you got to be ready for those games. The team got to be ready for those games. And I think that's what comes with the confidence level too, right? They, I, I think that's the part that Chicago's not used to that we that we honestly we should be used to it. We just haven't seen it in a long time. Um, but where you you see a star come in with the confidence of a star, right? You you look at Pat Mahomes and that quarterback, uh, um, the the quarterback uh, Netflix series, right? Yeah, and. I mean, if you wanted to, you could call him cocky. But I call it confident. I, Pat Mahomes believes that he's going to go out there and he's going to win every game. He believes that he gives his team a chance to go out there and win every game. Chicago needs some of that. 
And the one thing about Caleb that I'll say after sitting down and, and listening to more of his, the few interviews that he did have, um, but but hearing him talk in his Heisman speech and stuff like that and, and doing some some deeper dives into this young man, he's confident. He mm -hmm. brings a star's confidence. Mm -hmm. And you you need that in this locker room because I think you got a lot of dogs on this team. Yeah. But do you got stars? Yeah. Maybe Keenan Allen is a star right now. You got some dogs. But do you got stars? Montez Sweat, I mean, I, I, he's he's a leader by action, but can we really say he's a star? He's been in Washington this entire time, right? Like, that's a that's a forgotten place to be because you've lost so much. The the fact that he was going out saying, like, yeah, when uh, teams asked who I played for, I was embarrassed to say the commanders. That's tell you all you need to know. Yeah. I, no, 100%. Like, yeah. And so I think I think that's that to me is like when you when you get a star mindset in here. Now, he's still got to go in. He's still got to go out there and and uh, uh perform on the field. He's still got to go out there and show you that he can back up the confidence that he has. But that mindset is infectious. That mindset that that's that's Jordan. And I think that's why it's so interesting, right? Because it's like for so many of us, we're not used to the young guy being the star already, right? Yeah. He comes in with his star already on his chest. Now he's just got to build an NFL one. But Michael Jordan came in. Michael Jordan was amazing, but they never won. They would win regular season games, but they weren't able to go out there and win playoff series or playoff games, right? But Mike was confident, and Mike would have everybody around you believing Oh, snap, this dude here. Yeah, we got a chance with him. We got a chance with that young guy. But we saw Mike do the work, and so we're like, he worked hard to get there. He had to lift weights versus Detroit. He was lifting weights the whole time. He had to lift weights versus Detroit to finally be strong enough to get over that, right? You think about Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler becoming a star here, right? And so, like, all of a sudden, when, when Jimmy Butler was working hard and fighting through it, it was, oh, Jimmy, he's a hard worker. And then when he finally realized, oh, I'm a star in this league. Then it was like, oh, he didn't got he didn't got a little cocky. His head didn't got a little big. I don't know about this one. We've lost him. You oh, think about I you think about you coach, because I, I, I asked you to coach me harder. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, I think about guys like Jim McMahon. I think about guys like Walter Payton that walked on the field and they knew what their star was. Now, Jim's smaller than Walter's, but y'all know what I'm saying. Jim yeah. came in with confidence. Yeah, like that. That is sure. something that we haven't had in Chicago in a long time, and yeah. it's something we honestly shy away from. It's something we honestly don't try to go towards because we feel like the superstar is too high up. What do we always say? We don't want the wide receiver that's a diva. We don't want the quarterback that's not humble. We don't want the. I mean, we don't want the cocky players. You know what the cocky players usually have in common? They're good. <laughs> They're they're usually good players. They usually play pretty well. Yeah, I I just I just it, it's but it, it's so different because I I was legit. I was looking at the last dance the other day, and I I, I got to that section when he's when he's talking about uh, Scott Burrell. Um, and then and then even, even to go back a little bit, you know, further than that, when he when when they was talking about you know. Jordan and and getting over the hump against the Pistons, he was already where he needed to be mentally. He's like, "Yo, I got to make this infectious enough. Like, I got to bring Pip up. Like, Pip, Pip need to be that dude. If I get Pip in line, that means horse is gonna follow him. Yeah, and, 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 and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. And you kind of seen that." So and I that's where the confidence it, it, and the leadership come in. You got to be able to do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, listen, and, 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 he, and he said a point blank. Listen, <laughs> some of y'all like it, but that's because y'all ain't won nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. That, 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 that's because y'all ain't won nothing. It, ha it has to be a certain type of balance on that team, and I feel like th they're going to have that. And, and, and to that point, Caleb is going to be able to Talk that talk and eventually walk that walk because he know he he knows he's got those guys, 
behind them. You got to also... Hey, and, and then, listen, listen, that's, yeah. that's, your, your, your fight point is great, too. It's a lot easier to go on a fight that's supposed to be one-on-one when you know you got six of your boys behind Oh, yeah, for sure. Hey, if I turn around and I got Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Montez Sweat, uh, 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 Jalen Johnson, <laughs> uh, DJ Moore, uh, Gerald Everett, Cole Komet, uh, uh, throw Roshan Johnson in there. Yeah, I mean, he might get a little jab on the side, right? But I got real. I got when, when you got some blue chip pieces behind you, it's a lot more easy to be confident and cocky. So hopefully, yeah. we get the most out of him. I love this conf- uh, comment from Steve. He said, Jamarcus Russell was confident too, still is, bro. He said, Hey, when you say bust, you better put biggest on that mother. Hey, man. He, he he was kind. Of, he was confident. He got that check. Hey, bro. He, he, he was kind. Of, he was confident. He was confident in that McDonald's bro, order too. I never forget. They said they sent that man that tape, and he straight up had not watched none of the tape. He said, "Hey, hey, hey that tape was blank, bro." That mother said, "Yeah, I like this play. I think we could attack this coverage with this, and we can make this move." They said that man ain't watched no tape, boy. And then then they said somebody was it him too? They sent him the playbook. And was he the one that lied beforehand? Because it was $100 in all the playbooks? Oh, yeah. Was that yeah. him that he lied beforehand yeah. and he said... I think that was him. He didn't find the hundred, or he he tried to play it off like he had seen the hundred. He's like, ah, 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 y'all know, I forgot about that. I wasn't even thinking about $100. Uh, but no, nah, man, I just, I think that the Bears, listen, you you've got a piece on this team that um, you you've got a young man coming into this team that is a hungry team, and I think when you have a young man with confidence and you have a hungry team, it speaks to finally overcoming some of the demons that you've had in your past. And the biggest demon right now for the Chicago Bears is that Green Bay Packers driver. We put a poll up. Is Chicago Bears beating the Packers a must for them to be successful? 83% of the audience that is voted right now saying yes. 17% saying no. And here's the thing. I get the 17% too. Because here's the thing. If I watch, if I play uh, um, every other game and I find a way to beat the Vikings twice, the Lions once, you lose both. Or I'm sorry, I beat the I beat the Vikings twice, I beat the Lions twice, and you lose both to the Packers. I won a division. Oh. I got to win the rest of my stuff, but I won a division. I got to win the rest of my games, but I, I can beat my division. I understand why people say no. But I think that this is not a football issue. I think this is a Bears issue. I think this is a Chicago issue. I think that this is a, like, this is just the monkey that's on their back, and they got to find a way to shake it this year. Like, football-wise, how many times have we looked at it and we was like, listen, we got this. This should work for us. We should be able to do this. We should be able to make this thing work. If we're going to be successful, these things should work. How many times have we done that? And then we get into the game, and we're just like, what happened to all the stuff that you just did? You just beat this team doing all that. What happened to all of that? Like, this is a deeper issue than just the Bears players playing the Packers players. This is a mental hurdle that if this team can overcome it this year, I think sky could be the limit for them. I'm not saying they're going to go win the Super Bowl, but I think you're talking about a team that gains a tremendous amount of confidence in the quarterback that they have and a tremendous amount of confidence in the fact that we finally beat them. We can go out there and beat anybody. Like the video if you agree. Yep. Subscribe to the page. We're going to keep this thing moving along, man, because we got to spend it. a little bit of time slandering. I don't know if I'm going to call it slander. He deserves all of it. Um,